so, so there, is a, there is a beautiful thesis that was done. Actually, it's, it's huge. It's six volumes. And it's, on, it's called The Atlas of, um, of Asian Creole. So it, it's online. So I, I'd be happy to share the reference with you. I mean, actually, not only it's, uh, it has maps, it also has recordings. You can actually go and, and listen to the various dialects of, um, of Asian Creole. And what, what people have, have, have found striking is the fact that in terms of uh, variation, it's quite restricted. So it, it, anywhere you are in Haiti, you can speak to someone who speaks Creole, if you speak Creole. So there will be some words that, that are kind of shibboleth of certain regions. But overall, there is no... Um, issue with mutual understanding. You know, Asians understand each other when they speak Creole. You know, even though at first there might be a bit of hesitation if you come from two different regions. And, and that atlas actually documented that very well. That the, 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 you have lots of um, lexical idiosyncrasies across regions, but, but the grammar itself is pretty much similar, um, which one might say is surprising given that you had all this influx of Africans from various language groups, right? You would expect more. Uh, variation. Uh, but people have also argued that the fact that if you look at the history of Haiti, the, the country was for, for a long time pretty isolated, right, after independence. Um, in fact, that's something that we can talk about later. Uh, the, the, the European forces uh, and the American forces, even though Haiti held the U.S. in terms of its independence, getting more territory, like, I don't know if you've heard about the Louisiana Purchase, mm -hmm. you know, which was caused because of Napoleon losing Haiti because of the Asian Revolution. Um, but yet, the US quarantined Haiti very quickly. Why? Because Haiti was an example of, of black liberty, which was a threat to the world order back, back then. You know, so Haiti was, was unthinkable and unacceptable. So it had to be embargoed. And that embargo, people have argued, is what actually created this uh, uh, isolation that in turn gave Haitian Creole its uh, pretty much uh, its uniformity because there, there was little traffic from outside to Haiti. For a long time, Haiti was pretty much self-contained, and, and that held the language gel as a you know, pretty uniform system. And without uniform over time? Well, the, the, over time, the data is not so, it, we don't have enough data to document that, whether over time th there was more or less variation. Uh, because what we have is pretty fra fragmentary. We don't have lots and lots of evidence about, you know, say, 18th century Haitian Creole. We have some archival data, but not enough to be able to compare mm -hmm. uh, what happened in different regions of the country. Uh, but what we do have, say, going to the 17th, 18th century, you know, strike us as pretty similar you know, to, the, to the Haitian spoken now. So there were French scholars who were writing down what they would hear. They were writing down you know, varieties of Haitian Creole from the 18th, 19th century. And I, and I can still read those, those, uh, those texts. You know, of course, they were written with French orthography. And maybe that's, a, that's another confound. You know, they were probably imposing their French onto, onto the Creole that they were transcribing. But if you read that Creole back then, the structures were pretty similar to the Creole of today, you know, so, which also is striking as compared to English, you know, which, which uh, has evolved much faster. Mm 